I want to pause briefly here now and talk uh, for those who are using Excel Math as a supplement uh, and talk about what I call a core program connection. How do you use this in conjunction with another curriculum? Now, as I said earlier, if we are using this as a supplement, we strongly suggest that you consider 10 minutes for the lesson of the day and no more than 20 minutes in the guided practice, so a half hour daily supplement. Okay? It does not need to correlate with what your core is introducing. Often cores are tied to some sort of district pacing guide, and that's great. Excel math doesn't need to be tied to that guide because we're really about running under the belly and keeping all of the concepts in front of the students all throughout the school year because the light bulb goes on at different times for different students. So, uh, Keeping in mind that assessment that we just finished, what did your students demonstrate proficiency in? Long division. What are they struggling with? Multiplication of fractions. Let's say hypothetically in your core curriculum, hypothetically, next week you are scheduled to teach long division. What are you going to do on that day? Exactly right. You're going to spend time in multiplication of fractions. Remember politely that your district pacing guide, the reason the district has your district pacing guide in place is not that all you think of is in terms of following it. It is there to help you reach the goal. The goal is mastery of a set of concepts. If your supplement has allowed for mastery of a concept before the district pacing guide says you should introduce it, and we're going to keep it in front of Excel Math is going to keep it in front of them all throughout the school year. Time is short in the classroom. Don't waste time teaching something they already know. Instead, focus on where the dead birds, the canaries in the mine shaft, truly exist. And in a core program connection, you focus on the essential standards. You stick with Excel Math's daily pacing. You go with your core, certainly. Uh, you use your core to lean heavily on any sort of district pacing guide or trimester assessments, that type of thing. But oftentimes, Excel Math will bring to mastery a concept well before your core. And when it does, then don't waste time reteaching something they know. Spend time filling in the, in the, in the holes. Does that make sense to you? Very good. Uh, let me put it to you another way. Your students are a piece of Swiss cheese. Ah, and that's metaphor number three for those of you who are counting. For you visual learners, I travel a lot and I needed a piece of Swiss cheese that didn't smell on a plane, and so I went to a pet store looking for one of those squeaky, squeaky uh, cheeses, and this is the best thing I could find to kind of demonstrate what I mean. Bear with me. What I mean when I say your students are a pair of, uh, piece of Swiss cheese, conceptually speaking, they have some connected tissue. There are some concepts that they understand, right? Even the first day when they set foot in your classroom. But there are holes in, your understand in their understanding. There are gaps in their understanding, right? Your job as a teacher is really twofold if you want to distill it, not simplify it, but distill it down. The first thing you need to do as a teacher is identify where the holes in the Swiss cheese exist, where the gaps in understanding truly exist because you have a limited time period to try to uh, build a solid block of cheese. All right? Now, if you say to your students uh, on the first day of school, pardon me, mathematically speaking, will you please communicate to me where the gaps in understanding exist for you? Um, you know, they're going to look at you like you're from Mars, I think. But that's, quite frankly, that's exactly what our curriculum is doing for you. Your students are the ones who are communicating to you where the gaps exist. How do they do that? my check answer doesn't add up and I, I can't figure out where I'm wrong. Every day we're actually giving you canaries, dead birds and live birds, every day in the guided practice. If on a Tuesday everybody's hand is raised and it's all, you know, it's all focused on block B and you look down at block B in guided practice and it's multiplication of fractions, you don't have to wait for the test to determine you have a dead bird and something you need to do about it. Because the goal is building a solid foundation for your students. And here's what you can expect from us to help you in doing that as a tool that you can use in your classroom. 
From each grade, there's 155 lessons where each week you will have five lessons. You will have one test. You'll have the create a problem. We have quarterly assessments that are in a bubble in standardized format, so they're comfortable and, and, uh, and ready to take those type of tests. We have a two-part year-end test in the grades. Uh, part one is over one week. Part two is over the next week. It's a great year-end assessment of all of the essential concepts. Uh, it's great information to pass on to the next grade teacher. You're getting my students next year. Here's where they assessed at the end of the year. Here's where they're strong, so on and so forth. Uh, we also have those activity lessons in the teacher's editions that, that we want you to consider um, using as well. If you look at the correlation to your state standards, you'll notice that implementing the activities does a stronger job of completely correlating to your state standards. Uh, a couple things to remember. Our website www.xlmath.com. Tremendous amount of information you can go and print out from there. We have placement tests available and currently they're in English and Spanish. Uh, anybody can print them out free of charge. Uh, there's a, a communication on how it works we have, uh, in doing that. We have a glossary available in English and in Spanish because uh, we have an English, we have a Spanish translation of our curriculum. Uh, that's sometimes very beneficial for parents. Print it off and give it to parents who can't remember what a parallelogram is, so on and so forth. Uh, we have correlation to many state standards, also to the NCTM standards available on our website. Uh, lots of other information. The other thing is our toll-free number, which is one 866, and then 866 again, do it twice, 7026. When you call that number during uh, West Coast business hours between 8 and 5, Monday through Friday, West Coast time, you will never speak to a machine. We always have a human answer our phone. If you would like to speak with me, uh, call that number between 8 and 5 West Coast time, and whoever answers the phone, say, may I spe please speak to Bob? And if I'm in the office, I'll be more than happy to take your phone call and answer any phone calls, answer any questions you may have. The other thing I would suggest you do is that you watch this DVD once again uh, in about a month. Okay, now why am I asking you to watch it in about a month? How much of what I just said did you retain? 10%. How many metaphors did I use? What's the first metaphor? What does it stand for? Right. How, how much is getting into the students that you're trying to get into them from across the room? What's going to the side? What's the second metaphor? Canary in the mine shaft. What does it stand for? It's identifying where the reteaching opportunities exist. Identifying where the reteaching opportunities exist. And we do that most notably with our check answer every day and more effectively or more efficiently I should say with our assessment which is weekly. Okay? And using that chart that's in the teacher edition. What's the third? The third metaphor is the Swiss cheese. What does it stand for? Right. It's distilling down the definition of your job. It is identifying the gaps and understanding, conceptually speaking, quite frankly, in any subject matter. And then your job is to fill it. Now, by the way, on filling it, let me suggest to you, uh, first of all, in reteaching opportunities, always approach it from a different angle. You know, it didn't work this way. Let me try it from this angle. You have, and every school has this, you have a tremendous resource in helping you approach it from a different angle. Every school has this resource and often it goes untapped. Do you know what it's called? It's called the teacher's lounge. In some schools there's hundreds of years of professional teaching education. 